Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Can you hear me? Is the mic working? Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, for the introduction. My name is Amin Bermak. I recently joined uh, Hamad Ben Khalifa University, which is actually located in Education City, and it's uh, part of Qatar Foundation. And we, uh, we, we are a newly established university. We have a College of Science and Engineering, and that's where I'm coming from. We have actually an ICT division also. And in, in the ICT division, we have a lot of focus on data analytics, big data, cybersecurity, uh, and also sensors. We are working also on, on sensors. And this is going to be uh, one of the uh, areas that I'm going to address today. So uh, the, the title of my talk is going to be Autonomous Self-Powered Self-Calibrated Microsystems for IoT Applications. Most of the talks that I have seen today are talking about big data, data analytics. But the backbone of this is going to be sensors. So if we are able to design sensors that can be deployed at very large scale, then basically we can, we can gather this data. So it's really the front end uh, research, uh, basically, uh, area that we should address. And in fact, this is all, uh, all driven by IoT. Today, IoT is a buzzword, and it stands for basically devices that we can deploy at very large scale, but also it can be connected to the internet. So there is connectivity, and also there is large deployment. To enable large deployment, it has, your technology has to be low cost, it has to be self-calibrated, it has to be autonomous. Because, for example, if you are just sensing vital information about a patient, and you want, let's say, to measure EEG or ECG or temperature, let's say. Uh, if you want to deploy this at the big data scale, then the sensors have to be very low cost. They have to be autonomous. You cannot go and calibrate the sensor. You cannot go and change the battery. So most of these sensors need to be, needs to be, need to be self-powered, they need to be self-calibrated, and they need to be low cost. So today, actually, I'm going to talk about one example where we can deploy the sensors at very large scale, and we can actually meet all these requirements. All right, so if we, if we are able to uh, basically deploy large sensors, uh, large scale sensors, then we can enable smart cities. And this is also a, a big buzzword today. And basically, uh, in order to be able to deploy sensors at very large scale, there are many challenges that we need to address. And this includes sensors that can be self-calibrated because you cannot go and change the battery or we cannot go and calibrate the sensors. They have to have some kind of processing. These sensors have to also be able to uh, uh, gather information rather than data because communication is very expensive. So if you are, for example, taking a video and you're going to transmit the video, you're going to burn all your battery just trying to transmit that video because it's a lot of data. So you need to be able to, for example, extract features from the video that you are interested in. And that's what I call information rather than data. We should also have all of these building blocks working at very low power. So they need to consume very little power in order to be basically uh, uh, autonomous. And also security comes into place, because if you're talking about biomedical applications, you don't want to expose this vital information about the patient, and you don't want this, this uh, security to be compromised. So basically today, I'm going to give you an example of a very challenging sensor, which is actually a vision sensor, that actually we're trying to deploy at very large scale in order to enable different type of application, like environmental surveillance, uh, wildlife monitoring, military applications, traffic and vehicle control, even structural health monitoring, and recently a lot of biomedical application enabled by vision sensor. But we want this vision sensor to really be autonomous. So basically uh, trying to uh, get the sensors to be designed at very low cost, deployed at very large scale, and even self-powered, so you don't need to have a battery even in the camera. So, what are the challenges in this area? Actually, it's a very, very challenging area in order to enable the camera to be deployed as an, an IoT device. So one of the challenges is that vision sensors are very power hungry. If you take your camera in the iPhone, actually you're talking about about 10 megapixels, and typically you're consuming in the order of what? So if you consume in the order of what, it means if you put a solar cell, you have to have a very large solar cell in order to sell power your, your, your mobile phone or your camera. So basically, power is a big issue in vision. And also, you need to transmit a lot of data. So if you're talking about 10 megapixel, every pixel has three colors. Every color is actually encoded in 12 bits. So you just do the math. If you need, let's say, 30 frames per second, which is not very, very high frame rate, you're talking about 30 times 10 million times 3 times 12. That's the number of bits that you need to transmit in one second. So typically, you're talking about gigabyte per second, which is very, very, very large. 
In fact, your communication is gonna burn all the battery if you transmit this amount of data. So the key question that we try to ask ourselves in my research group is, can we self-power the sensors, one? So can we use the light itself to self-power the sensor? And also, can we transmit information rather than data? I'm not going to transmit the whole image in this room, but maybe I'm just interested in, in the faces and I just capture the faces, I transmit it, I can detect people and so on. So this is basically smart sensing rather than basically uh, info, uh, database sensing. So actually the objective of the, this research work or research project was to design very low power cameras or vision sensor. They're not really camera, they are smart camera. And also to sell power the sensor. So sensors that can basically harvest the energy and, and sell power themselves. And also we design intelligent data converter. So instead of converting all the pixels and the data and transmitting it, we look at the feature and we only transmit the feature. So that's what we call analog to information. Because typically uh, in, in the electronic world, people talk about ADC, analog to digital converter, which means that you take every pixel and you convert it to digital and you transmit it. In our case, we're talking about analog to information, which means that I have the scene, but I just, let's say, capture the faces. That's my information. And I, I just operate on this. So basically, I can lower the power. So let me try to give you a, a little bit of technical related to this area so that you can understand the basics of how we did that. Typically, if you take your iPhone camera and you try to see how it works, usually it is based on what you call three transistor pixel, which means that basically uh, the way it works, you have typically in each pixel, which is very small, you're talking about two micron by two micron. That's how we can build 10 megapixel cameras. So in, the, in that pixel, when the light strikes that area, it's actually falling into uh, what you call a photodiode. And then this photodiode, once the energy of the light is coming into it, you have a reverse current. And basically this reverse current is proportional to the intensity of the light that falls into the pixel. That's how we form the image. But this photo current is actually very, very, very small. And that's why most cameras, they operate on what you call integrating camera. So they need to integrate charges over time. So basically when you have a current that falls into a reverse current in the diode, it's gonna give you a slope. And you need to wait for a, uh, for a, a certain time in order to get a decent signal. So you get a voltage, basically. You have this, this current that you, you see here is gonna give you a slope. So if you have a high intensity of light, it's gonna be a very sharp slope. slope. If you have a, a low light intensity, it's gonna give you a slow uh, slope, basically. And we try to look at the slope, and usually you wait for a certain time and you measure the voltage. This is how it works. So in my group, we try to reverse this because actually this has some issues. The issue is if you wait for a very long time, the bright pixel will reach zero. If they reach zero, it means they give you all the same code and you have saturation. That's why, for example, with, with your iPhone, if you take a picture, let's say in a dark room and you have light coming through the window, all that window part, you see it as white, the same value, all saturated. So this gives us saturation. So in my group, what we try to do, we try to reverse this concept and we said, instead of waiting for a certain time, and I measure the voltage, as you can see here. What we do, we reverse it. We just fix the voltage, and we just measure time. And by doing that, actually, you don't have any saturation. So based on this concept, actually, we built the chip, and we come up with the concept to design a new camera. And actually, basically, if you have the light that falls into your photo detector that gives you a very bright, I'm representing it by the sun, so it's gonna give you, basically, this time, if you have a very low intensity, it's gonna give you this time, and we just measure the time. Measuring the time is actually very easy, you just need a counter. So based on this concept, we actually would build a chip, this is actually showing my, my face with my students, very happy to see that we can capture images using this concept. And actually, I'm gonna skip this for the sake of time. What we did after that, in order to lower even farther the power, what we tried to do is this concept that I told you, analog to information converter. So instead of, in a, normal, in a normal camera, what you do is you have the array of pixels, and then you convert it to digital, then you store it in the a, in a, in a RAM, and then you process the data, for example, you do compression. What we try to do is we try to move this compression right at the pixel level. So we can detect faces, let's say pixels that relate to faces, right at the pixel level. So that I don't turn on, I, I only turn on pixels that I need. And therefore, you know, if I take a picture here, most of the pixels are actually background. 
So the only percentage that I need probably is only 10% of the whole frame. And therefore, I can save 90% of the power. So based on this concept, actually, we come up with a chip and we designed this. I'm not going to go into the details because I have only two minutes. So I'm going to skip the details. This is explaining how it works. Basically, it's a camera that looks at just features within the image and turn on the ADC for that specific feature. It turns out that we can save more than 90% of the power using this concept. We didn't stop there. What we tried to do is we tried to harvest the energy from the, from, from the light itself. So because actually what happens is we are measuring time. So pixels that have very high intensity will have very short time. And therefore, this pixel, you don't need it anymore because you have the frame time. When the pixel fire very quickly, then basically it gives you a time. And then you don't need it anymore for the rest of the frame. So what we did is we said, since I have a high current for that pixel, let me try to, once I measure the time, I turn it into a, po a power harvester. And I connect it to the battery so it can sell power the rest of the pixels. And we come up with this concept where basically we first start by measuring the time of the pixel when it fires. But after it fires, we put it back into the battery and, uh, through uh, an energy unit. And we can actually charge the supply. And we can sell power the chip. So actually, we have a pa uh, US patent on this. And actually, we have a company that is interested in this concept. And we developed this concept. This is actually some simulation. This is actually the first ever camera that was designed not using any battery. So actually, it harvests the energy from, from the light and actually it serves power itself using the concept that I introduced. So let me try to conclude. Sorry, I, I was very fast. The, I don't have time to go into the details. So IoT devices will eventually involve sensing, processing, and communication. And the main challenge is really to operate all of this at very low power. And you need to have energy harvesting. You need to have information rather than data based converters. You need to have self-calibration as well. So what I showed you is actually time domain encoding, because we, we designed this camera based on time domain encoding. Time domain encoding appears to be very interesting, because you have immunity against dynamic range reduction. You don't have the saturation, and therefore you can have very wide dynamic range. It's very immune against noise, because you get a time and you measure it with a counter. And also, it gives you very reduced power. In fact, we were able to reduce the power by three times, three orders of magnitude compared to an iPhone camera, for example. And it's very promising for uh, processing, and, and uh, that will conclude my talk. Sorry. Thank you.